Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and today we're going to work on a little Valentine gift for my wife. This is a little LED heart that uh, does all sorts of strange and wondrous things. So, uh, we'll be putting that together and I'll be talking about building kits in the meantime. Okay, now I'm going to put this down here so you all can see it. This is a cookie sheet and it's got raised sides here. Okay, and uh, my wife was kind enough to give this to me um, for use for construction because some of these little parts like to roll. Notice all the <laughs> These are all the same resistance. There's going to be a bunch of them here. And here's a bunch of LEDs. Now these are kind of weird LEDs because they uh, are different colors depending on how they go through. Okay, so let's uh, open up the instructions. These are the instructions. The do-it-yourself. Right there. Do-it-yourself LED colorful heart display kit. Okay, so let's uh, make sure that we have all the components that we want. There's a checklist here. For comments. Components. First thing is 32 of these 510 ohm resistors. Let's just count. We've got more than the 32 we need. I think we're going to have some left over. Okay, so we'll mark that off. One 10k ohm uh, resistor. Is there a 10k ohm resistor in here? I don't see one. Uh, there's two. Now this has got black, black, brown, black, orange. This is going to be the 32 ohm resistor. There's two of them in here. That's all the resistors there are. Now the capacitors, there will be two at 22 picofarad. And these can be hard to determine the value because you need to get light. Okay, and they end up giving us three. And then there's supposed to be one electrolytic capacitor. I'm just looking at the values on this. Now they look to be okay. The crystal, we need a crystal. Okay, semiconductors, uh, we've got the multicolored LEDs, the 40-pin microcontroller, which is right here, uh, sockets, dip socket, power switch, I guess it's this. Yeah, that's a switch. Okay, power connector. Right here for five volts. USB to one millimeter power cable. That's this one. Okay, and a single-sided PCB, which is this one down here. Now let's see what we have to do. Install R33 along with capacitor C1 and C2. It says the design of the board positions several components beneath the microcontroller inside of the IC socket. This is where we shall begin assembly of the unit. Install R33. This is one. Now, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sneak over here and test this. Um, okay. And this is 9.71, so it be 10 kilo ohms. 10 kilo ohms. And that is 10 kilo ohms. So R33. Okay. And let's see where we've got to put that. We've got to put that right in, in there. So. Uh, we're going to start by using this. Okay. 
and we'll put it in in this way first. The spring loaded kind of goody here. Um, now, the advantage of this is I can turn the board to solder and things like that, okay? So, let's install this resistor right where R33 goes. Now, this is interesting because there's a hole either side of it. Okay, and there's R33. We'll spread the leads apart. Like that. Okay. R33. Brown, black, orange, gold. Brown, black, orange, gold. Okay. C1 and C2, which are 33 PF. Now that's interesting because there's no 33 PF capacitors. There's 22 PF capacitors. So this says 33 PF capacitors. Well, let's go with the flow of what we got. It says 22 on it. And C2. Now these are marked 22 picofarad on the board. Okay, so these are right according to the board. It appears to be an issue with the instructions. I don't know how many of these they sell, but it'd be nice to get the instructions correct. I wish I had a way you could see right through my eyes. See what's going on. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to solder these. We're going to solder all the parts we put in there. Just tin this iron just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and the two capacitors. Okay, now let's uh, trim these. Okay. Now what we're doing is trimming the spare lead on the back. Trim it right down to the circuit board. We'll keep these leads in case we need jumpers uh, later. Okay. Now, what's the next step? C3, observing the correct polarity. Okay, the long one is the negative. Oh, I'm sorry, the short one is the negative. So the plus goes there. And the negative goes there. Boy, these are really tiny holes. Electrolytic capacitors are capacitors. I mean, there's nothing different about them. They're, uh, an easy way to put a larger amount of capacitance in a small package. Okay. And now the crystal goes in place. Oh, 
Oh dear, we've done something wrong. This needs to be put in so that it will lay on its side. Let me unsolder that on. Okay, and its tip is going to get hot. And I'm going to bring out my other. The regular soldering iron, we'll put that in there. And this has to go until this gets hot. It's getting there. Okay, and while we do that, we're going to need to find another 10 microfarad capacitor. The reason we need to get another capacitor is because, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. This is 10 microfarads, 15 volts. But I don't know if it's going to lay on its side properly. So we'll have to see. Okay, now I'm going to undo these two with this thing. Faster, which is bigger okay and we're going to go ahead and lay it on its side right there before we solder this in oh, no. a little bit of tape to hold it on its side I did not read the instruction all the way it says, now install C3, observing its correct polarity and position it so that it lays on its side. We'll see if that new, new one does the job. By the way, that gun I used is a suction gun. We're to the opposite of a soldering gun. I'm going to turn that off. This right here. Uh, you put this, it's got a little hole in it. I don't know if you can see it. But you put that around the component on the solder side, push the button, and then it sucks the solder inside. Okay, so we'll just, I think, keep this over here because in case we need it again. Okay, now we'll take these off, and I don't know what kind of trouble we're getting into by um, putting in the bigger capacitor. Come on. Okay, but we've got it on its side. Uh, I think the other one was designed uh, more for it's got a fit underneath so let's put in the crystal now crystal can be installed on the board there's no polarity to the crystal so we'll put a crystal in here There, now we're going to need to hold that in place while we flip the board over. Okay, let's just solder one of these. We're just going to solder one, one end. Okay, now we're going to push up on the crystal at the same time we reheat that joint. And oh, I felt it go in more. Okay, that's how you get these things to lie flat up along a board. Okay, learned that trick from Randy K7AGE. 
Okay, the crystal is in. Now, this takes care of the installation of components under the microcontroller. Now we can move on to the remainder of the board. There are now 52 pieces of 510 ohm resistors, green, brown, brown, which can be installed into the board in positions R1 through R32. Here's R1. There's R1. So a whole bunch of 510s. So you hear the sum up here. Some here and some down here. Okay, why don't we stuff, say, the top part. By the way, the term stuff in this case means uh, put components into the board. Now these are all set up. I'm just going to put them down here. Make sure we don't get mixed up with that one. And these are green, brown, brown. Green, brown, brown. Okay, we're going to... They're all going to lay flat. So we're going to put them like this. And these are really tiny holes. Okay, there's the first one. Wow. Well, 31 to go. Okay, we've got these stuffed here on this side. That's about half of them. And we got all these wires on the other side. So we're going to solder all these together. Not together to each other. We're going to solder them time wise at the same time. Now, this, I'm going to bring this thing down so it'll be a shield for my eyes. Okay, uh, we're just going to keep doing Okay, so here we are right now. We've got this row and this row of resistors all connected, soldered, trimmed. Now, what these resistors are for, there's one for each LED. And these are the current limiting resistors that limit the current that goes through the LED. Okay? So now we've got a few more to put on, four more to be exact, and then we'll have the resistor part of this thing done. Okay, here we are. All the resistors are completely soldered in, so let's see what the next step on this thing has to say. That, that step took a long time. Okay. Takes care of the installation of the components under the microcontroller. We soldered the 32 pieces of the 510 ohm. After the resistors are installed, there is one jumper right here, which must be installed on the board. You can use one of the discarded legs of the resistors. The jumper is labeled on the board and is located in the middle right side, just between resistors R15 and R. 16 directly in between diodes or LEDs D15 and D16. So let's go ahead and, and put that up, uh, take care of that. We're going to take a resistor lead. Here's a resistor lead right here. And we're going to slide that over there a little bit. So we're going to bend this down put this in here. Now what a jumper is for is when no matter how smart the board designer is they can't get a circuit where they need it. Meaning they can't get a connection where they need it. Come on. There we go. Okay. Oh, I hate this tremor. 
Okay, we've got the jumper in. Now let's solder it in. Our jumper is right here. Let's solder that in. Okay, well, there's not much left to trim off. We're going to trim it anyway. It's almost done there. And there's a little bit there. Okay, so the jumper is in. Now let's see what the next step is. Now install the 32 LEDs to the board. Note that the LED has one short and one long leg. The long leg is the anode or positive and goes into the hole on the board labeled with the plus sign. Ensure the LEDs are flush to the board when installing. Okay, this is going to take a while. So we'll do one here and then we'll go back off camera and do the rest of them. We're going to need this little bag opened here. This little bag does not want to open. Okay. There's more than one way to open a bag. There. Golly, that opened the bag, I think. Yes, it did. Now I'm going to dump these out over here so that we can get to them easily. Here's one of these LEDs. Okay, the longer leg is a positive. Alright. The shorter leg is the negative. Let's just double check that. So I'll note that the LED is one short and one long. The long lead is the positive. Okay. One is the anode. So we'll just put this where the positive is and the other and make sure that they're flush with the board okay like that oh these are much easier to install than those resistors now I'm going to again show you this technique by the way this is how many resistors we had left over quite a few um, I'm going to solder that one, then I'm going to push the LED from the other side up flush with the board. Okay, now when I do this one, like this, it will be flush with the board. So let's look at this one over here, and we see very clearly that it's nice and flush with the board. Okay, let's do all the rest, and I'll turn off the camera for this, because it's just repetitive. Okay, let's see where we are. This is the device. Uh, the LEDs are in a heart shape. They're all in. They are all flat against the board. I'm very careful to do that. And the way you do that again is by soldering one of the leads, and then whilst continuing to solder the lead, push component in till it's all the way there and hold it till the solder sets and then solder the other one okay so here we are now let's see what the next instructions are okay power switch can be installed into position S1 along with the power jack at J1. Okay, so let's take a look here. I'm going to, since we're going to be soldering down the other end of this board, I'm going to clamp it in here. This poor old thing is getting old. Okay, the power switch. Here is the power switch here. There's 
you can just see the number of pins on the thing. And we're going to install it the way the pins go. Problem with these little components is wires are so thin that if you bend them too much you'll break them. Okay, oh my poor fingers. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of tape. And kind of hold this. Ah, come on. Just to hold that in place while we solder one of the connectors. Okay. No, you can't see it there. I'm going to solder this connector here. Come on. Okay. Now what we do is we hold the switch and push it down until all those connectors are in. And then we're going to let up on it, and we can get rid of the piece of tape now. And the thing is now down flush against the board. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this far one here. Okay, so that's the switch there. Easy to see. Right there, turn push on, push off. Now the power connector is big. It's going to take a fair amount of heat to do this. So the power connector presumably goes this way. Okay, now I'm actually going to bend these tabs a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and we're going to solder it. This may take a little more heat. Soldering it right here. I know my fingers are getting in the way. I'm trying not to. This is going to take some soldering. Okay, now I'm going to push on the thing. Make sure it's flat. Okay. And then we'll solder this. Okay, and we'll solder this, which doesn't look like it's actually connected to anything. But it gives it mechanical strength. Okay, now that takes care of that step, and we have the power connector and on-off switch right there. The IC socket can now be installed at U1 to the board. Make note that pin 1 of the microcontroller is located on the left side of the board. Position the socket to fit on the board around the components installed in the first steps. Okay. Okay. So here we have the microcontroller already programmed. And here's its socket. Now, you'll note, and this is hard to see, so I'll bring it up here. At uh, this point, right down there under those resistors, there's a little notch in the white outline. That notch goes where this little notch goes right there. That's how you keep these things straight, to get that little notch. And if for some reason that notch isn't there, proceed very carefully. Now we hope no pins are bent on this, because we got to get all these pins in at once. And that side goes in. This goes in. 
Okay. Alright. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to solder one pin and get that thing flat. Is that in properly? It is in properly. And you see where this capacitor sticks up a little bit above the board. This capacitor sticks up a little bit above the board. That's too bad because uh, we're going to won't be able to press the processor in all the way. Okay, but let's go over on this side and look at what we can see. I'm going to get my glass down here again. Okay, and we're starting over there. Whoops. Okay, we're going to have to do the tape thing. This holds it in place only temporarily till I get that first solder joint soldered. Okay, now I'm going to reach over around here and press on that board and then just let that go right there. Okay, now let's do this opposite one here. Press up on the board. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we have a bunch of things to solder. To get that thing all the way in, we can take our tape off now. Okay, now it's going to be very repetitive to solder all those, so I'll turn this off. Okay, the socket is now soldered in. Again, we just soldered this end and this end, and that held it down flat. Okay, we held the soldering iron on the pin while we pushed it flat and then held it there till the solder settled. Okay, now uh, one thing I'm kind of curious about, um, we had um, C1, C2, C3 over here, capacitors 2, 22 picofarad. I've got an extra capacitor here, I've got lots of extra components. Including a couple LEDs. Okay, well, this only leaves the microprocessor for microcontrol microcontroller for installation. When installing, make sure that pin one is located on the left side of the board. This completes the assembly of the board. Okay, uh, where is it? Here it is. Now, this tabletop here, this uh, blue tabletop, is part of a static mat. You know, we're working with a static sensitive component here. And it's really hard to see, but you'll notice that right there, there's a little notch. That little notch is going to match that little notch. Okay, because the pins are certainly not numbered. Now, one of the problems with these parts um, is that these pins are spread a little wide to go into the socket. So it's going to take some work to get this thing to go into the socket. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is just take this out of here. Okay, let's set that aside. And we'll move things out of here. I don't want any of those jumpers sticking to the board. And the notch right there, right there. Okay, now if I put these, and you've got to be really be careful. There's several things that can go wrong. One, you can be off a pin. Okay, and uh, that won't work. Second, it's possible to fold one of these things under. 
Uh, third is that each one of these takes a certain amount of force to put in. Okay? But the problem being that um, that force all adds up. Okay, and I want to get this thing kind of out over here so I can push on it. Okay. And then here, when we put the pins in. We don't want a pin to bend under. I've had that happen. In fact, it happened on my Tentec radio. I was installing an upgrade. And the stupid pins uh, bent under, and I couldn't see it till I took a really high magnification glass to it. Now the next thing we're going to do on this, I'm going to put it on the piece of paper, because we're going to turn it on and try it. Now I am using as a source of 5 volts, and this is a 5 volt. I mean this is something out of the maker community, and they don't pay much attention to ham radio 5 volt restrictions. I'm going to zoom all the way out come over here. Okay, this is in um, my impulse electronics. It's got a 5 volt output. So I'm going to put the 5 volt in here. Okay, big test. Big test. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Oh, there we go. See if there's any LEDs being skipped. This one right here is being skipped. Okay. Let's go find out why that's being skipped. Let's see, it's D32 that's being skipped. Okay, this is a pretty cool thing for, um, you know, Valentine's Day gift. And unfortunately, because of the lighting here, you can't see the fact that these are really colored. Okay. Now it turns out these uh, LEDs only have two terminals, but depending on the amount of current you put through them, they can create um, different colors, okay, which is what they're doing here. And I do not know why that one is not working. It could be a problem in the uh, microcontroller too. But it seems to work for all the other other LEDs. So there we have it. We've made this kit. Let's come up here and talk about it a little bit. Alright, we took this kit and we made it. And we were successful. Whoa, we don't want to put it on something metal. Uh, I'm going to have to find some sort of a housing for it. But um, this kit is by uh, PCBoard.ca, 4646 Heritage Hills Boulevard, Suite 14617, Mississauga, no, Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, L5R 4G3, or you can go to www.PCBoard.ca. And as it turned out, the shipping cost about as much as the board. The board is very inexpensive. If anybody's got a, a su suggestion, I would be happy to hear it. So, there you go. A nice little Valentine gift for uh, my wife. So, um, I'm going to edit this down a little bit so it's not too long. And uh, put this up at uh, some point in the circulation. Probably it'll show up about a week from now. Um, this is uh, one of the first practical I've done. I've got another kit from them that we might follow all the way through because it's much simpler. And um, 
Now, as far as programming this board, I don't think you can. Uh, I'm sure somebody who knows how to program these things knows what to do. But in any event, it works. And uh, so what I have used for tools is a soldering iron. This is a rework station over here. This right here. And I'm going to turn the soldering iron off. And it will also do hot air. Uh, I also had this Hacko desoldering tool, which I've had for a few years now. This was expensive, but boy, it works about every time. So I've got my multimeter. I've got my impulse electronics. Um, let's see what is that there? DC 12, Mighty Go Box, 12 DC Power Force Model T15, T415, and I'm using the little five volt output here to uh, make this thing work and it's quite the little little goody so we'll see how soon uh, my wife notices that d18 doesn't light um, so there you go why did it suddenly stop <laughs> it must be out of out of things to do Okay, so let me try that again. Yeah, it starts over again. All right, there you go. If you'd like to help support this channel, please go to decastlercom slash support. Uh, please subscribe, please check out Patreon, please click like, all those wonderful things that uh, make Google uh, and YouTube enchanted with this channel. So until we next meet, 73.